Welcome to uh, chapter six. Um, this will be the first chapter in uh, our Introduction to Business 2 course. And uh, we will follow this format for all of the chapters. Um, so I'll try to do video uh, lectures uh, to, that are just really designed to supplement the information that you have in your textbook and uh, provide a recap of some of the key concepts and uh, uh, some of the key learnings of uh, each of the chapters. This chapter takes a look at uh, strategy. And strategy really is a long-term plan on how the business will achieve its goals. Sounds really simple. Um, we've all done strategies and set goals before. However, in a business context, it's very challenging. And, and there's no real one single principle that everyone adheres to. And in the constantly changing business uh, environment, it makes it more difficult uh, to develop and, and maintain strategies. Many corporations, you know, you think of some like Polaroid and Kodak and uh, maybe even Blockbuster, made some strategic errors. And that has uh, undermined the, their strength in the markets or some of those companies no longer uh, exist. So this chapter will take a look at uh, the following objectives relating to business strategy. Uh, first of all, we'll take a look at what strategy is. We'll try to understand why strategy is important to business and look at some of the key areas to develop a strategy around. We'll take a look at some of the tools to help develop and implement those strategies. And uh, finally, the chapter will conclude at uh, looking at strategy in the uh, not-for-profit uh, sector. As I said, uh, strategy is critical to the long-term success of uh, any organization. And uh, there are many reasons why strategic plans have failed. Um, some of the, some of the reasons, uh, common reasons, are a failure to understand the customer and the lack of market research, uh, the inability to predict the competitive environment um, and, and or keep up with a, a changing competitive environment, uh, a third reason, which is uh, why strategic plans fail, is an uh, overestimate uh, our resource competence. Uh, so, um, not having a clear understanding of what our resource capabilities and competencies are, and uh, hence failing in the market. Fourth, uh, fourth reason is uh, no senior management commitment, which is critical to a strategic plan. Fifth is uh, failure to coordinate activities or an design an, the design of an organizational structure that is not flexible so we can't meet the changing demands in the competitive environment. A sixth uh, re common reason why strategic plans fail is because the employees don't commit and buy into the strategic plan. Employees are, are fundamental to ensuring our success over the long term. Um, Another reason is the failure to uh, manage change within our organizations. Uh, the competitive environment, the, the technological environment, all the environments that the businesses operate within changing at incredibly fast pace. And uh, a failure to be able to manage that change uh, can lead to uh, a failure of our strategic plans. And finally, the eighth most common reason why strategic plans fail is poor communication within the firm, so not everybody is moving in the same direction. So the concept of business strategy is one of the most important responsibilities of senior management. Steve jo Jobs from Apple said in 2009, manage the top line, which is your strategy, your people, and your products, and the bottom line will fail. So it really highlights the the importance of having a solid business strategy. Um, so the long-term success of an organization is really based on two primary principles uh, to be able to uh, survive. Uh, the first, of course, is to develop a strategic direction and a market position for the uh, company. And once that is done, the ability to execute. Uh, so we need to develop a solid strategy and then, of course, have the ability to execute that strategy throughout all levels in the organization. Um, 
And, and most of those strategies will be customized for each business. So there's not one strategy that will um, uh, satisfy all companies. That's why it's it's very unique and individual to a company, because every company has different challenges, different advantages, um, different strengths, different weaknesses, as we'll soon see. And so a strategy is uniquely developed for every uh, business. And it's all about understanding what opportunities exist in the marketplace and which ones should be pursued. And think of strategy as being summarized by two questions. Where do we want to play and how do we play to win? And answering those two questions really forms the basis of our strategic direction. So in simple terms, we can take a look at the, this diagram, which explains uh, business strategy. Uh, first of all, is having a solid understanding of uh, uh, what market opportunities exist for our firm. Uh, so having a clear understanding of what opportunities exist. Then taking a look and comparing to see which ones could we pursue? Which ones do we have the, the, the resources, the competencies, and the strengths and weaknesses? Uh, so which ones could we pursue? Because we may not be able to pursue all opportunities that exist. Third is making a decision on which ones we will choose to uh, focus on. And the, the, the last component is what action path will we take? How will we execute that plan? And the answer to those questions really forms the uh, intended or our deliberate strategy, which is uh, where we will play and how we will win. Keep in mind that it's very important that our strategy be uh, dynamic as opposed to static. Strategy is not something we may do um, you know, once and, and tuck it away in the desk and forget about it. We need to be constantly evaluating our strategy, making changes, uh, perhaps uh, uh, changes to our, our strategy, even whether it be long-term versus uh, shorter-term strategies. Uh, because there may need to be refinements and amendments as the as our company changes, as the business environments change. So it's always a very dynamic process in uh, creating a, a business strategy. So developing a strategy may, means making uh, decisions and determining the direction in six key fundamental areas. The first is uh, purpose. And the purpose refers to the overall mission and vision and guides managers in their decisions. So this is a big picture view of the company. A mission uh, statement really defines the reasons we exist. What are the broad goals of the company? For instance, Walmart, uh, uh, it, their mission is helping people save money so they can live better. Canadian Tire's mission is we exist to create customers for life and shareholder value. A vision statement is a forward-thinking statement that defines what a company wants to become and where it's going. Walmart's vision is to become the world leader in retailing. At Bank of Montreal, where I work, our vision is to be the bank that defines great customer service. So the vision is that forward thinking statement, the, the, the making sure that everybody in the company understands the, the long term strategic direction of the company. We definitely need to define what markets uh, segments do we want to compete in. Uh, for instance, some of the banks might decide to compete in personal and commercial banking in Canada and the United States. So it really considers the current and future profitability and growth. Walmart's market segment is changing a little bit to go from a discount mentality to more brand conscious, uh, to try and attract more brand conscious clients and uh, perhaps the more affluent uh, uh, affluent market that is price sensitive. We need to define strategy around the products and services that we want to have offer to our clients. For instance, do we want to focus on brand name products versus generic products? 
Uh, do we want to offer a full suite of products and services versus very selective products? For instance, car dealerships want offer financing um, uh, companies and uh, uh, for financing as well, so they've expanded their, their product and service uh, base. Resources is another area in in allocating the resources that we have. So that the resources I'm talking about might include the capital resources, equipment, plants, as well as labor and knowledge. What is what is our strategy around how we best use our resources to ensure strategic success? We also need to uh, have a clear strategy around our business systems and organizational structures. For example, how are we going to distribute our products? Are we going to distribute them simply uh, uh, have, an, have a, a store presence uh, like Walmart or just be an online um, retailer? Um, are we going to manufacture our products or are we going to outsource the manufacturing of our products and just buy pro or broad buy products and redistribute? And the final thing is, uh, the final core element for assessing our strategy is defining the responsibility and accounting. So who is responsible for the core elements of the plan? Uh, and uh, part of this involves developing goals for um, uh, individuals who are responsible and accountable for achieving our plans. So let's take a look at how to develop our strategy, as well as some of the tools uh, to success. So um, the, the, the strategic plan is really kind of the roadmap to the uh, strategic planning process. So we can think of the strategic planning process as, as divine, defining that roadmap. We've got a destination that we want to get to. So let's plan out the route um, and on how we will get to that final uh, des destination. So the building of that roadmap is really called the strategic planning process. And it's all about uh, making choices and defining actions uh, to uh, get there. On the next slide, we'll take a look at some of the general steps associated with developing a, a, a plan. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we'll talk more in detail about each of these uh, components. So let's take a look at these general steps. So this, uh, this slide outlines the uh, general steps in uh, defining our roadmap or our strategic planning process. The first is to revisit and understand our purpose and destination. So making sure that everybody in the company understands uh, um, who we are uh, in the company. From there, we can take a look at doing an internal and external analysis. So what this means is understanding our internal environment as well as the external environment. Both, uh, so the internally, understanding our company, understanding our strengths and weaknesses, understanding the customer, their needs, the values, their attitudes, how they buy, and externally taking a look at um, uh, the macroeconomic environment, how that's changing, as well as uh, understanding our competitors. So we'll take a look at some of the uh, tools and models to help us do our internal and external analysis in, uh, as part of this chapter. Once we've done that, we can identify uh, the opportunities that exist and some of the threats uh, that we need to be aware of. And the next step is defining our objectives. Choose where we want to play. Uh, what makes the most sense given all of our understanding of the internal and external markets and the opportunities that exist, as well as the resources that we have in our hand. And finally, to develop our plan, define how we will play the game and carry out that plan and uh, uh, then go about executing it. Really important to understand that uh, there's kind of an evaluation loop. So at each stage, we need, may need to go back and, and revisit our purpose, revisit our, our internal and external analysis. Uh, so this is a very dynamic process and, and involves 
uh, feedback, feedback and making sure that we monitor our success and we may need to reevaluate uh, as we go forward. So this is just a quick uh, summary of uh, the uh, strategic planning process as outlined in the next page. And uh, uh, it is a good uh, uh, slide to uh, use to, to study from, but uh, nothing new here, just the same information on the, on the previous slides. So uh, let's take a look. So let's take a look at our internal and external analysis. So it's all about assessing the business risk and change in four primary areas. Um, first is macroeconomic, uh, uh, understanding of the world around us, understanding the industry, understanding the competitor, and understanding the company. And so we'll take a look at uh, some of those key tools in the next slide that will help us gain an understanding of that that uh, the internal and external analysis. Uh, so the external analysis focuses on understanding what's happening in the markets today, what's going on around us, what's going on in the environment, the business environments, and uh, understanding uh, how not not just how it exists today, but how it's how we see it developing in the future. And the internal analysis really focuses on our resources, our competencies, what are we good at in the, the business. So having a clear understanding of our capabilities and, and the capacity that we have to uh, um, uh, develop a strategy around. So let's take a look at five models that will help us understand the internal and external uh, environments and some of the uh, business risks in those environments. So let's take a look at five tools that can help us with uh, understanding our internal and external environment. The first is the PESTEL model. And the PESTEL model is um, a, a tool to help us understanding, uh, first of all, the political environment with, that we are working within, the economic environment, and with respect to the economic environment, understanding uh, the type of market structures we exist uh, within or will be playing within if our market is uh, Canada. We, uh, we have a mixed economy, understanding what that means, but also understanding where the economy is, what's happening with GDP, are we in a growth or are we in recession, what's happening with unemployment, what's happening with inflation, what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with exchange rates if we're looking at doing business internationally. So uh, understanding the um, macroeconomic environment within which we are operating. Understanding changes to society, and this might include changes to demographics, you know, the aging population, uh, uh, birth rates, uh, um, uh, uh, in income levels of uh, uh, our customers and the markets that we uh, want to uh, work within. Next is an understanding of the technological environment. How is it changing? Is it uh, what are some of the, uh, how do we expect it to change in the future with respect to uh, technology in uh, the, the world around us? Understanding the, the environmental impacts is a lot of emphasis on, you know, recycling and reduce, reuse, uh, recycle programs. Uh, are there, is there new environmental legislation about if we're a manufacturer? Really having a good understanding of the environmental uh, impacts around us. And lastly is the legal and regulatory environment. Are we in a highly regulated industry that we're looking at pursuing? Uh, if so, do we have a clear understanding of that? What's happening in the legal environment, both from an industry perspective and in an overall perspective in the markets that we are looking at uh, doing business in? The second is uh, Porter's Five Forces model. And Michael Porter uh, was a professor at uh, Harvard University, and um, uh, in the 1970s, he developed a model to determine, determine how competitive the industry is. And it's used in a lot of uh, um, uh, businesses, and, and, and the goal is of, of Porter's Five Forces 
is understanding the variables that uh, uh, affect the competition in an industry. So having a clear understanding of the industry that we want to work within. And so that includes five sources of uh, competition. Uh, the first is competitive rivalry. So having an understanding of the size of firms in that industry, the number of firms in the industry. Understanding the barriers to entry to get into a particular industry. Uh, there might be um, barriers to entry such that there's high capital expenditures required to get into it. Some of the some of the people in that industry might have some cost advantages, such as Walmart, if we're looking at getting into the retail markets. Understanding uh, brand loyalty. There might be such strong brand loyalty to other uh, competitors' products that will make it difficult uh, to get in, and hence is a, a barrier to entry. So having an understanding of the barriers to entry. Third is having an understanding of the threat of substitute products. And substitute products are different products but they serve the same needs as perhaps the ones that we are thinking of introducing. So if there's a lot of substitute products, it may be more difficult to enter or succeed in that uh, market. For instance, the e-reader industry has seen some decline due to the popularity of tablets, So, uh, the, the, because a tablet is a substitute product for the e-readers. So we need to take a look at not just the substitute products that are existing today, but which ones might be uh, uh, appear on the horizon. The fourth uh, force of competition that uh, Michael Pointer talks about is buyer power. So really, this is the strength of buyers or the buyer's ability to ex exert uh, control over price. So if there's a large number of uh, uh, buyers or some large buyers, they may have um, uh, if there's a large number of buyers, they may have less control over price, uh, but if there are some large buyers, we may have lesser control uh, over uh, price. The fifth is uh, supplier po power. So these are uh, uh, the number and size of suppliers in the market, and uh, they will exert control over price as uh, well. So we're talking about suppliers that provide resources uh, to the business. As uh, there are fewer suppliers, their control increases and, and uh, um, our, our power to influence them may be diminished. So really understanding uh, the, the industry that we are working within is critical in, as part of our internal and external analysis. The third is understanding the types of competition in the industry that we want to get into. Um, and you'll recall some of these, the four primary forms of uh, competition uh, that exist from, you know, IB1 or a previous economics course that you may have taken. Uh, for instance, a monopoly, just as a quick summary, a monopoly is where there's one supplier of a good or service in a market. Uh, an oligopoly is where there's few, maybe two or three suppliers of a good or service in a market. Uh, perfect competition is um, uh, uh, a market environment or a type of competition where there's a large number of suppliers, large number of customers, and they're providing essentially an identical product. And mar monopolistic competition is where there's a large number of buyers, there's a large number of sellers. They provide, they provide a similar product um, but the, the, the suppliers of the product are able to differentiate their product or try to differentiate their product uh, from the competition a little bit. So think of the fast food industry, a large number of them, and they all try to, to differentiate their product to make their product more appealing to the consumer uh, than others. So having a clear understanding of the type of competition that exists will uh, help us define whether that's a possible uh, industry we should be looking at or market we should be looking at and uh, or uh, um, some there we may not be successful particularly for oligopolies and monopolies may be very difficult to get into if if uh, possible at all a uh, SWOT analysis uh, is an analysis where we can understand our strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats so uh, we can we can do 
an analysis of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of our competition, as well as our organization uh, internally to uh, get a better understanding of the uh, uh, our internal environment as well as the external environment. And the fifth is something that's called a 3C analysis, which helps us understand the internal environment. So it's really taking a look at our uh, capabilities as well as the competencies, the things that we're really good at, as well as the capacity of our resources. And I'm talking about financial resources, physical resources, employee skills, knowledge, and that sort of thing. So really having a solid understanding of the capabilities, the capacity, and the competencies of, of our organization and internal view. So we'll be talking about each of these five models a little bit more uh, throughout the course. Uh, but it's important to have a good, solid understanding of each of these to be able to do an internal and external analysis uh, of uh, the, the uh, environments around us or understand our strengths and weaknesses internally. So once, we've un once we understand our internal and external environments, the next step is to uh, identify our competitive advantage. And a competitive advantage uh, is really why the customer deals with you. How can you provide more value for your customer than the competition? And there are really two types of competitive advantage that exist. One is a strategic competitive advantage. So uh, strategic can competitive advantage is somebody that gets into the market first. Uh, so, um, uh, for instance, if we think about Apple in terms of an innovation, they are often the first to enter a market with a new product and, or service. Uh, so they really have a strategic competitive, competitive advantage because they're able to get into the market first through uh, innovation, research, and development. The second is forming an operational competitive advantage. So that might mean we can do it more efficiently or more effectively than anybody else in the market. So we might provide superior quality. We might be able to do it at a lower price. We might be able to do it uh, with higher satisfaction. There are different ways to create an operational competitive advantage. So in the next slide, we'll take a look at four main areas where companies can create a competitive advantage. So let's take a look at four major areas that we might be able to establish a competitive advantage. So uh, the first is uh, in uh, innovation. So that might be innovation in terms of uh, the process or, uh, to manufacture, for instance, or innovation in terms of uh, developing a new product um, uh, or a new service in the market. So we might be able to establish a, a competitive advantage by being very innovative compared to the competitors in, in our market. We might be able to establish a, a competitive advantage because the quality of our product or the quality of our service is very uh, high compared to our competitors. Uh, so uh, we might be able to establish uh, brand loyalty because of the excellence of our uh, products and the reliability of them. So quality is a second area in which we might make or be able to establish a competitive advantage. The third area is a fairly broad area called customer responsiveness and that might mean that we're able to, uh, to offer a lower price for our consumers or our customers. Uh, perhaps the best service uh, um, and develop a reputation for being very strong in the service uh, end of it. So, so being very responsive to the needs of uh, customers, which gives them a reason to buy from us compared to the competition. And the, the uh, fourth major area for establishing competitive advantage is, of course, efficiency. So perhaps we, we can do things faster, we can do them better, we can, we can do them at lower cost and become more uh, efficient. Uh, we can um, uh, perhaps uh, um, uh, do things at uh, a cheaper price to, to increase profits 
so we've got through, e through efficiency because we've become very efficient. So if we take a look at some of the businesses that are, are well known, um, you know, for instance, Hallmark, you know, Walmart is, uh, has defined a competitive advantage around both their product offering because they, uh, their super, so super centers uh, have a wide product offering that other competitors may not be able to do, as well as discounted prices. Superstore prices uh, have developed a competitive advantage around uh, prices and uh, efficiency. Uh, uh, McDonald's, um, you know, has has had a competitive advantage in the consistency of their product, uh, fast, uh, being able to to uh, provide that product fast, low cost, easy access, uh, having uh, locations all over the place. Honda's tried to develop a competitive advantage at uh, developing precision engines and powertrains, and are known for that. Uh, and uh, uh, Coke, uh, the Coca-Cola product, has uh, developed a competitive advantage around their, their, their recipe and uh, uh, their product development, uh, their distribution network, and their production techniques that's, that has made them better than their competition. So, so it's really important for a business to understand and define their competitive advantage uh, so that uh, customers uh, will buy from them and not their competitors. When taking a look at uh, a competitive advantage, uh, a competitive advantage must be sustainable. So it's when, what I mean by that is that it's not easily copied by our competitors because if we're able to identify a competitive advantage for a short period of time, guess what? Everybody's going to jump on the band, bandwagon and try, try to duplicate us, which will diminish our competitive advantage. So our competitive advantage must be sustainable, not easily copied so that uh, we can stand apart from our competition. So once we've identified our competitive uh, advantage uh, after doing our IE analysis, we can start to make decisions on which opportunities to pursue and uh, how to allocate our resources. And this starts to form the basis of our corporate uh, uh, strategy or corporate plan. And there's really three levels of um, um, the strategic, strategic plan. First is a corporate level strategy. So this is the big picture strategy, what we intend to accomplish, what markets we will pursue, and where we might choose to invest and disinvest. So the corporate level strategy is typically a longer term uh, strategy, you know, three to five years, five years to 10 years type thing. So this is a big picture uh, view. And it's often the responsibility of more senior level managers in the company. The second is uh, next. Uh, second, the next level of strategy is the business level strategy, and this really defines how we will accomplish our corporate strategy. It must be congruent with our corporate level strategy. So these are some of the specific objectives: who is accountable, who is responsible, um, to to achieve those uh, uh, business strategies, which will in turn lead to uh, being successful at executing our corporate corporate uh, strategy. So this is really how we intend to accomplish the corporate level strategy. And it's often done by middle level managers. This is more midterm in focus. And the third is our operating plan, or these are the, the tactics that are the uh, specific objectives, perhaps on a shorter term uh, uh, nature. So these are the perhaps daily production quotas and, and uh, uh, staffing on a daily basis. Uh, that are designed to achieve our business level strategies, which in turn form uh, will uh, assist in achieving our corporate level strategy. So really three levels of strategy that we might, must uh, uh, take a look at in our, in our business. So this is just a, a graphic representation of the, uh, um, you know, the, the corporate level strategy, the business level strategies, as well as all the, the uh, components of our operating plan. And what's important to note is that they all have to be linked. Everything has to be aligned in the same direction. So keep that in mind as you're working on your Mike Spikes project. Uh, when you're defining your strategies, you know, making sure that all your, your, your decisions 
are consistent with both your business level strategies and your overall uh, corporate level strategies, which are your, you know, in your in and uh, which are your mission and in your vision statement, your long term strategy. So everything must be aligned. They must be uh, congruent. So when we're talking about the uh, creation of an operating plan, these are the specific tactics that need to be executed to meet the business level strategies as well as the corporate strategy. So these are more specific uh, goals, uh, you know, over the shorter term, you know, maybe the one year uh, type thing. Uh, and, and divining uh, an operating plan really requires a clear definition of what the market is or the product is. A clear understanding of the value proposition and, and the, the market position we want to obtain, um, uh, development of sales forecasts and budgets, as well as expenditure forecasts uh, for the uh, you know the next year or the next three years, for instance. Uh, un having a clear strategy and plan around staffing, production methods, uh, what equipment we're going to need, what resources we're going to require. Um, and in the development of um, those uh, uh, objectives or, or targets or, or short-term plans, um, a concept to keep in mind is the concept of SMART goals. So SMART goals are very specific. For instance, perhaps our, our, our goal is to increase revenues by 10% by third quarter. Uh, SMART goals are measurable, so we can evaluate whether we're achieving those goals. SMART goals are attainable, yet challenging, and SMART goals are relevant to the strategy, so they must be congruent with our business and corporate level strategies, and uh, SMART goals are timely. They have a time period, they're very time specific. Uh, and it's important to have SMART goals so that we're able to monitor our performance going forward. So before executing our plan, we must review it to make sure that our activities uh, are aligned to our business and corporate strategies, that the budgets and projections are realistic and attainable, that we have the necessary resources to be able to achieve our strategies, and that we have a benchmark or some sort of monitoring system that's in place so that we can see if we are on the right road or if we've deviated and how to get back uh, into uh, uh, so that on the right path so that we can achieve our um, uh, business and, and corporate level strategies. So the strategy really needs to define where and how the organization intends to compete in the marketplace. Um, um, which weapons of competitive rivalry it will leverage, and the marketing and operating plans that are going to be required so that we can efficiently and uh, effectively uh, execute our plan. So when, when reviewing our strategy, we can take a look at some of these questions uh, as part of evaluating whether our strategy is, uh, is well defined. So does it leverage our resources and capabilities uh, through our, uh, that we have an understanding of through our IE analysis? Uh, does it fit with the uh, industry and market, uh, mar uh, market uh, conditions? Um, are they sustainable? Are our competencies uh, sustainable? Uh, going forward or so that nobody can copy them. Uh, are they consistent with our strategic objective and longer term plans? And uh, do we have the ability and, and the ability to uh, keep with it to successfully implement our strategic strategy? So important to review our strategy before uh, going out and executing it. So the final uh, stage is committing to the plan and uh, embarking on executing our strategy. So the final stage really is commitment to the plan and the organization commits to 
or locks in their commitment to capital uh, resources, for instance, uh, to be able to achieve that, uh, that strategy. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so this is where the, the company manager, senior manager, commit to uh, the financial impacts of the plan, uh, the operational commitments to the plan uh, in terms of plant, equipment, staffing, research, developing, development, uh, marketing, training. Uh, and of course, the more money that's committed to the plan, the higher the uh, the higher the risk. Uh, and a key requirement for the execution phase is for managers to continually monitor the success of the plan, and if need be, take corrective action if things are not going well, and if things are going well, understand why uh, we have been so successful. So let's take a look at the, the monitoring plan success in the next slide. So a key element in the execution phase really is monitoring our progress and uh, taking uh, corrective actions when uh, required. Uh, so if this uh, uh, green line is really our plan, this is our strategic uh, uh, plan, so monitoring whether we are on the right road. And if we start to deviate from that plan, understanding where we've uh, deviated and uh, taking some sort of corrective action so that we can turn around and get back on the right road to success. Uh, so this might involve things like monitoring sales, our sales uh, uh, levels, what we expected, our operating costs um, in line with what we expected, and is our profitability okay, is our staffing uh, okay, um, have we, is our cash flow um, as intended or as we expected it to be? What are the actions of our competitors? Have they changed? Constantly monitoring that. And have there been any changes in the uh, political, economical, economic, societal, uh, technological, the environmental, and legal and regulatory environments that we must be aware of because they, they might affect uh, the actions that we need to take to uh, achieve our corporate level strategies over the long term. So, so monitoring uh, success is critical to any business uh, function, and particularly so uh, with respect to our uh, strategy. So it's important to keep in mind that um, uh, the development of strategy is just as important for a small business as it is for major uh, multinational corporations. Uh, sometimes it's harder uh, because um, um, small business managers uh, are pulled in lots of different directions. They're the jack of all trades. trades. Uh, they have a lot of things on their to-do list. Uh, they may have limited resources or lack of skills to be able to accomplish their, their plans. And um, uh, they might have, be under a lot of uh, time pressure. So, so sometimes it can be more difficult for smaller businesses to um, uh, 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 not just design a strategy, but monitor where they are in executing that strategy. However, it is critical for long-term growth and uh, survival in today's competitive environment. So while most of the uh, uh, things that we've talked about so far uh, in strategy and development have been focused around the uh, profit-oriented business, um, strategic planning is uh, as important in the uh, not-for-profit sector or the social economy. Uh, so uh, if we don't have a well-thought-out uh, strategy and operating plan, we really won't survive, even though we're operating in a in a not-for-profit uh, environment. Not-for-profit organizations still compete for investment dollars, funding, grants. They compete for skills and, and employees. They compete for uh, resources. Um, the, the major difference is, of course, their overall mission. And they must balance the management of the, their limited resources with uh, their um, uh, 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 
uh, overall uh, mission statement. So they must balance the mission with economics. They must uh, sustain and develop a, a member or, do or donor base to the organization. And they must ensure that they've got uh, strong involvement in the community and foster developing relationships within that community. And in, in a way, become ingrained in the communities within which they operate. And um, not-for-profit organizations, too, must uh, be very effective and efficient at uh, providing uh, the services uh, that they uh, intend to do. Not-for-profit organizations, such as the United Way, to be successful over the long term, must, uh, must have clear strategies and monitor performance uh, with respect to how well they're achieving their strategies, even though their mission might be differ from uh, uh, for-profit organizations. So this slide just shows uh, some of the differences between uh, the social economy and not-for-profit organizations and, and uh, private sector or, or for-profit organizations. Um, so, so each of them differs in terms of their overriding uh, objective. Uh, their uh, uh, influences or, or management structures, uh, the ways that they obtain financing uh, will differ, uh, and uh, their revenue models will differ uh, as well. So take a look at some of those to, to quickly understand the differences between not-for-profit and profit-oriented uh, businesses. So just in summary, uh, successful businesses have one very common denominator. They, they really take the time to plan, uh, plan how well their position will, their business will be positioned in the marketplace, what markets it will serve, how they will execute the critical components of their strategies, and how will they do it better than their, their competitors. And a successful business person really understands their competitive advantages, and uh, they know how to... Uh, sustain those competitive advantages so they can be best of class. Uh, so the successful, successful strategy will properly ass assess the external environment uh, and um, uh, define changes uh, uh, in the opportunities within the market that uh, we intend to serve and uh, allocate uh, our resources efficiently and effectively to ensure that uh, that, and allocate those resources so that we can maximize our capabilities. And uh, keep in mind, we should always take a look at understanding our strategy from the customer's perspective and really have it uh, fine-tuned with our, our customers. We must always focus on the, 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 the needs and the values of our customers in designing and uh, executing our corporate level strategies. So each of the chapters will kind of uh, summarize some of the key concepts. Uh, and so these chapter summary slides are uh, good to, to serve as a quick, um, a quick review of the material in the chapter. So um, when studying, take a look at uh, those uh, chapter summaries and make sure you're comfortable with all those concepts that are the learning objectives for each chapter uh, when reviewing for term tests and, and uh, exams. So that's it for uh, chapter six. Uh, so uh, there are some, um, there are some, there is some additional uh, information in your textbook that you can choose to review some of the key terms and, and take a look at some of the uh, discussion questions. I won't be um, uh, uh, always, I won't always be uh, including those discussion questions uh, in the discussion forum. Sometimes I may find one that's uh, particularly interesting, and so I may post. A question on the discussion forum. So always check the discussion forums uh, and uh, uh, feel free to join in on the, the discussion thread. So, so that can, will conclude uh, our uh, lecture series for chapter six.